Hi, folks. This is Basil Chapman sitting for Tom O'Brien. I usually do the Tiger Technician Show 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock a.m. East uh, every day. And I also have the opening call, Daily Market Newsletter. Let's look at this 3 o'clock time frame price. The Dow is down 700 points at 29,383. Just went right through the 30,000 millennium level that I thought would be a very important level to hold. Nope, just went right through. What we're looking at here is, let me just quickly do this pattern, then you'll know exactly what I'm looking at. You see this pattern, this expanding cone, rising lows and much higher highs, and then it comes down. Normally, when it fulfills an up move going to at least four or five higher peaks, when it comes down, it, re it could retest the left side low, but usually it doesn't go under that for very long before it bounces. But look, 29.653 was the low of the 17th of June uh, earlier this year. Had a fabulous rally from 29,653 all the way to 34,281. Uh, that was what exactly two months later, 8.16.22. And then we came tumbling down. You see all these little H patterns that were failing. And now we've got this huge extension to the downside. So uh, as I'm looking at this with the Dow down at, at 29,455, you can see a pattern that I talk about very often. We call it, we call it the dreaded H pattern because if you take out the left side low, you can go quite a bit low. You have two bars, sometimes three, in which to try to get back above that left side low. That's the arch in the weekly chart being repelled from the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone right there. We've come down, and you can see this monthly chart has started the leg C to the downside. Now, what's very interesting here is that if you look at the S&P, the S&P, is down at the 36.73 level, but it's 36.38. I believe it was 36.38. I should know that. I've spoken about it all, all day. 36, there it is. 36.38.15 was the low of the week of the 17th of June. Very sharp rally to the uh, 42, uh, 40, what was that, 40, I think it was 43.25 level. And then what happens is, it comes down, but so far it hasn't taken out that left side low. And you can see the weekly chart uh, is is the technicals are the technical indicators are failing. And what you've got in the weekly chart is finally there's an S, and that says that the nine period moving average has finally turned underneath the fourteen period moving average. We've still got a whole week to go for it to try to turn up again. So this is a very important moment. We'll do the QQQ right now. The QQQ is the NDX 100 Invesco QQQ Trust Series. It's like a fund for the uh, uh, NASDAQ 100. And here we are going into the Chapman Wave inside track. It should be a propellant zone, not a repellent zone. So this whole area into the 267 area is really important to hold in the next few days. And I'm going to talk about the next uh, uh, Sunday night session going into Monday in a moment. But he has a leg, each of the downside, the Chapman Wave, the the. H pattern that we're talking about, it's sharply lower. It's gone one to one to the downside in the IWM down five at 166.37. And 162.48 was the low of June. It hasn't taken it out yet. And the monthly chart is arched over. Now we need to go to gold. Gold is down very sharply, down $30 at 16.51. Now what we're looking at is for the first time in uh, quite a while, let me open up this weekly chart and you'll see something very interesting. You'll see that Although gold is held extremely well, considering what the dollar, the dollar is in a multi-decade high, the gold is still holding pretty well, except it's at the 1651 level. And it says because it's taken out this key left side support going back to uh, about August in the 1720 area, this is going to be very important because it, together with silver, um, it's acting very poorly. Silver, over the last week, I've been saying silver is holding a lot better than gold. All right, let's go to the, the dollar uh, because there are, a lot of, uh, there are a lot of things we want to talk about. We also want to talk about what can happen on Monday. Uh, we are forming a pattern that says there's a good chance Monday or Tuesday we could make some kind of a low. Well, the dollar is up at 113.12. Uh, up a dollar eighty-four. I, I should mention we've been long since two thousand and eighteen, 
and the 90 area, here it is, just a magnificent move to the upside, but it is damaging, it's hurting the multinationals. You can imagine what profits are like with the dollar so strong. So what we're looking at is the dollar, I've got it in leg C, it means that sometime next week we could get some kind of a pullback. So far it's extremely strong. If you look at the Euro, USD, Euro dollar currency pair, oh, it's just tumbled, it's broken, all the left side supports. And this is gonna be interesting as well because this is a divergence that I haven't heard anyone talk about yet. The U.S. dollar, Japanese yen, usually follows the trajectory of the dollar. They don't necessarily go one for one to the, to the upside or the downside, but they kind of parallel one another. However, 146, the U.S. dollar, Japanese yen currency pair, so the yen went to 145.90. This is the uh, continuous contract uh, on the 22nd of September, that's yesterday. Unlike the Dow, which has screamed to another high, this is showing a stalling motion. Now I'll try to put it together with a volatility index just before we go to a break. And what we're looking at here is the volatility index is in a leg D in the Chapman Wave methodology. It is up at 20, it hit 32.31 a little earlier on. It's at 31.36. This is different to other patterns because once again, it hasn't done that very often. Uh, when you look at the monthly chart, but look at the day, the weekly chart, you see the 38.94, that was the high, what was that, back in March, I believe at the March low, yeah, and at 38.94, that was uh, February, February the, February the week of the 4th, since then we've made lower highs, and I've got a pattern that I call the Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone. Look how many times. How does the, how does the price know that it, in a diagonal pattern, it's got a, it just constantly hits a particular level and then reverses. I mean, I can understand horizontal when you say 120, but when you're coming down in fractions, look at this, we went right to the green line, the breakout line today, and now we've pulled back just a little bit. If we close very solidly green, this will be the first time in a long time that the weekly chart on a Friday has closed this high in a green pattern. There was a moment when it did that, back in early May, and then the week of the 6th of May, it made a high of 36.64 before turning down. So that, in fact, will take me to, uh, let me just check what the time is. Yep, just checking the time. That'll take us to um, the TLT, which is the bonds, and the bonds made lower lows today yet again, leg E in the, in the daily chart, and the yields are streaming to the upside. That's really important. But look at this. Economically, the crude oil is saying, well, we're in a recession for sure. You don't have to call it an official recession. It's down below 80 at 78.82. There's so much to discuss. When I get back, we'll talk about the potential for some kind of a low Monday, what we would look for if there was going to be a low and what we should perhaps think about over the weekend. 